Okay, well, hello. I'm Jen, and uh, thank you guys for coming. I've got this set up so that I can see you in the chat, available to me in the chat bar, but besides that, we are just going to go ahead. Um, you can type in the chat bar to uh, each other, or to me, or if you have questions or anything like that. Um, we had a few people here and they had to go. They had other meetings that they had to go to, but they stopped in to say hi. So I'm just gonna keep going and whoever comes in, comes in, and that'll be great. So, um, hi, I'm Jen, and this is gonna be a series, online series, called the Online Sessions. And uh, today we're gonna start and we're gonna talk about fitting in. Uh, I did a little drawing here, a little illustration for the fitting in. And, uh, you know, I got so many people made comments about this today. One of them was that it looked so 70s with all of the, the yellows and the oranges and the greens and stuff that I chose to color them with. But little do they know, I just only have a few markers. So 70s markers, I guess I have, which is cool. Um, so first thing is, uh, as we go through this, um, I just wanted to share that I, I used to teach in, inside of a jail, and the things that I got to teach in there, uh, I always felt were really, really valuable anyway to all of us. And I thought, what a shame that these aren't being taught uh, in places outside of here. I just didn't know if that was happening. And so um, it's been a long journey, but I want to start having the kinds of conversations out here that we are having in there, because it's all about growing as individuals and uh, taking a look at ourselves and laughing at how, uh, how hard we make this life when uh, we've got so many things to be grateful for. Uh, but we need to do that in community. Community is critical and we grow in relationships. So um, I wanted to talk about something. I was actually inspired by a friend of mine. We went for a hike this weekend and uh, we got to this resting point. We got to a tree where there was shade and uh, we, we got in a conversation and, and she said something to me uh, along the lines of, I'm going to butcher it, but <clears throat> you weren't there so you don't know how much I'm butchering it. She said basically, you know, then I always felt intimidated, like I was insecure. I didn't feel like I, you know, should hang around someone like you. And that really struck me <clears throat> because I had felt the same way about her. And I thought to myself at that moment, isn't that interesting that here we are, two uh, women, very capable in our lives and relationships, um, both, uh, you know, improving our lives from a day when we used to use drugs or alcohol, and, and we both have all of these wonderful gifts and talents that, that shine to each other, right? But from inside, all we can see is what we aren't. It occurred to me that we do that a lot. You know, we have a desire to fit in. That's just human nature. Uh, we have a desire to belong, right? We like to be connected. And as I said, we grow in relationship. And so it's important that we are connected and that we feel like we belong. But it's also really important that we pay attention when we start to compare ourselves to others because really, what are we trying to fit into? What are we trying to fit into? And what is it about me that doesn't fit? I think we have to shift the way that we look at the whole question, right? We look outside of ourselves, we find what we aren't, and we compare ourselves to it, and we feel less than, we don't feel good enough. But if we can look outside of ourselves and see what's different, and appreciate it, what a different world, right? So the very, the very same person who said to me that uh, she felt, you know, insecure or something like that around me, I had to turn around and say, you know, I felt the same way around you because she's very physically active and very disciplined in it. I've never been. Oh my God, I can't go to the gym. I have joined more gyms and not gone. Okay, I have worn workout clothes around the house all day because I'm going to go to the gym any minute and never gone. And, and I usually keep those memberships for, you know, three months before I can just swallow my pride and go cancel. 
I just, I want to be a gym rat and I'm just not a gym rat. And so people who are gym rats, people who are working out, people who are really buff and really thin and don't have an ounce on their body. And I compare myself to that and I'll never win because I'm not willing to do that work. You know what I mean? I'm not willing to go to the gym, obviously. And so I can either keep trying to fit in with people who like to go to the gym, or I can accept that I am not a gym person and I can find out what it's important for me to focus on. So I think of all the different times that I have felt on the outside looking in. Um, and there's so many. And when we have this pattern in our lives of comparing ourselves to people who are different than us, all we can see on other people are the things that we wish we were. But if we stopped looking at others first and we started looking inside ourselves to see what we are supposed to be, right? To see what we're good at, to see what we like to do, to stop pleasing people, people pleasing, right? If we can learn to stop doing those things and just get quiet and just look inside of ourselves and say, yeah, I don't like the gym. I don't like anything about the gym. Here, I'm gonna be painfully honest with you about the gym, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like the gym because I don't, wear, I don't like to wear tight clothes. I don't like all of my curves showing. It's none of your business. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I don't like bathing suits either because it's just too vulnerable. I wanna wear jeans and t-shirts. That's how I'm most comfortable. I don't wanna to go to the gym because half of the people that use the machines and sweat on them don't clean them. And it's gross, it's just gross. I don't wanna to go to the gym because I don't know how to use any of the equipment. And I don't want to pay a trainer. I just don't want to pay one. And I've had friends try to show me how to do workouts and I get bored. So how many times am I going to try to do this thing that I don't enjoy doing before I accept that I don't enjoy doing it? When we want to fit in, since that's a natural inclination, since that's a natural human instinct to belong, what we have to do is we have to look inside of ourselves and ask ourselves what we enjoy and then go and find others who enjoy the same things. Does that make sense? It's kind of funny. I found these poems. I was looking at Shel Silverstein today. I love Shel Silverstein. I don't know if any of you guys ever uh, read Shel Silverstein's books when you were growing up, but he's just so wonderful. He just did such a great job of um, keeping stories so simple and illustrations that are so simple. And um, the older I get, the more I realize how wise he was. I just thought he was funny. I just thought he was cool. Um, but there was one poem that I came across today. Um, and I'm going to share it with you here, if I can. It's, um, it's called No Difference. Small as a peanut, big as a giant, we're all the same size when we turn off the light. Rich as a sultan, poor as a mite, we're all worth the same when we turn off the light. Red, black, or orange, yellow, or white, we all look the same when we turn off the light. So maybe the way to make everything right is for God to just reach out and turn off the light. <laughs> I'm a dork. I know that. That's not a secret. I love that poem. I'm not asking God to turn out the light because I'm, I'm digging the experience of being alive. I do, however, think that the more we start to understand who we are as individuals and how that fits into the team that is the human race and we all start working together instead of comparing ourselves, right? We start realizing that if we close our eyes, all of the things that we use to distinguish ourselves from each other, all of the things that we 
use to uh, create hierarchy and to to shame and to uh, you know uh, I can't think of any more words but just create difference create schisms right create polarities all of those things are absent when we're not looking they're creations of our own they're stories that we've created to make ourselves higher or lower than somebody else instead of all of us grabbing hands in the middle and walking along this journey so what's your experience uh, if you're there go ahead and type into the the uh, chat bar here, if you can find that. And uh, I'm just really interested in what your thoughts of all this, this is. And, uh, and when you say that, as you, as you type, um, I was thinking the other day too, it's interesting. Uh, I grew up as a little white girl in a black community and um, I felt so ugly. My mom was beautiful, you know, and I, I wanted to look like my mom, but I didn't look like all my friends. And I wanted hair that had body in it. And I didn't have it. I had this really fine stick straight hair. And I wanted a uh, skin that looked beautiful with lotion and, and Vaseline on the forehead, just and hair that was just sculpted. And I wanted, uh, I just, I wanted to be beautiful. And because I was different from what was around me, I wanted to fit in more than I wanted to be me. And it's interesting how many times in our lives we can do that to ourselves, right? And I don't know that people around me, I don't know that my black friends made me feel badly about myself. I don't have memories of that. I have memories of being embraced. I have memories of being pulled in and loved and encouraged. Um, but I also remember feeling very different and wishing that I looked more like them. So this whole fitting in thing, um, when we're little, we almost, we don't know the difference and we want to belong. But as we get older, I think it's really important that we start to look at the value of our uniqueness. I had shame for a, lot of t for a long time about being white. Having grown up in a black community, I had a lot of shame about being white because when we watched films in school, I didn't match the oppressed. I matched the oppressor. And I was confused by that because my heart didn't feel that way. Uh, when I came out as gay to myself, I was confused because um, I was not the things that the world said that was. But I was afraid to be all of me because I was different. I'm looking for messages and I'm not getting any. Um, which is fine. This was a trial run tonight. I'm grateful for those of you that showed up and I'm grateful for uh, those of you who have shown interest in just having inspiring conversations. Um, I'm gonna look for feedback and I'm gonna get more structured on my end so that it's, uh, I didn't really know what to expect tonight, but I don't wanna ramble on. I'd like to have some engagement. So uh, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm going to thank you for coming. I'm going to encourage you to sit with yourself quietly uh, tonight and ask yourself with nobody around, nobody to judge you, nobody to tell you that you're right or you're wrong, just quietly sit and ask yourself, who am I and what do I want? What do I want to do? What makes me happy? And it can be your own little secret for a while. But let's work towards becoming that. Because you're beautiful. And we're all unique. And we all have jobs to do. And, uh, you know, another thing, somebody said, why would you want to be like other people? 
because there's only one everybody. Even if there's twins, there's only one everybody because we are the expression that our life takes on. So uh, for me to want to be like you or to want to be like a celebrity or to want to be like a peer, for me to want to be like them is I want to be an imposter. We don't need two. We just need one of each of us. So become yourself. Thanks for being here. Have a good night. You know, I'm flattering myself. I'm all, there's going to be a lot of people here. you so great that you came to see me. Just don't overthink it, you know? So we'll see. Right? That's right. Uh, I'm recording it. So I'm going to start building a body of work, a body of conversations and thoughts. And uh, I am so lucky to have you in my life, Chris, because like, seriously, uh, what do we have if we don't have each other? Like I yeah. just in general, like I, yeah. I think about that Barbra Streisand song now, people who need people are the luckiest yes. people in the world. I'm like, how is she so wise? And I thought that was such a lame song and now I get it. Yeah.